Hi, I am Whitney Maina from Nakuru, Kenya, and this is Spotlight. Whitney is a, an event planner, a mom, a homeschooling mom, in that case, a community leader and a serial entrepreneur. Um, I come from a close-knit family. We, I was born and raised in Nairobi, Buruburu, and, um, and also Eastlands in general because we moved around different estates. I went to girls' schools my whole life. I was in St. Anne's, then in Sacred Heart, like basically a lot of schools, but they're all girls' schools alone. I had a very good relationship with my parents. I have one sister and one brother. Uh, best memories of my childhood is um, my, my birthdays because uh, I feel like we didn't have a lot but my dad used to make sure that we get those butterfly queen cakes so it's like basically a queen cake that has been cut on top and then creamed and then we'd put a candle even if it's like a real candle so my birthdays are my most memorable moments. Uh, I think that one just basically came organically because that's what they invited me to do. But then I, because I'm a, I love doing business, it's easier if I, in a course that I'm able to, like master the risk assessment and stuff, yes. Uh, my most challenging uh, thing I think is um, Access to capital in my career, in, in my career, uh, being a more of a business person, I feel like I have a lot of great ideas. But then, capital sometimes tends to be an issue. But I'm making do with what I have. How I've been able to overcome is by coming um, up with business ideas that do not technically require money. So, example, being an event planner is something you can start with zero money as long as you have like a plan, because every time you're having an event, somebody will basically pay you to do the event. So like you get the deposit, you can literally work on zero. Yes. So most of the, uh, the way I also do digital marketing, I started it without an office. Of course, right now we have an office and everything, but it's a, I just decided to work with things that do not require capital because there are a lot of ideas, but then sometimes people are close-minded and they just want a specific idea. Yeah. Oh, yes, um, I've done several, but I think the best that I feel like that was really great was the one I did for Meningai. We were having um, a cook challenge in our platform. I have a community called Nakuru City Moms and Dads. It has currently 185,000 members. That time it had actually 10,000 members only. So the issue was um, you were supposed to cook and post, and then um, you just say that you, why you love Meningai. There was like uh, a hashtag. And it was the most successful because I like a thousand people cooked and then they posted and then they had like likes like the first person had like uh, it was what 1700 likes like that so it's like I really brought the community together in the cooking challenge and as much as I've done so many other things I feel that one was a true one because people didn't still know my capacity because I had little followers but they still went for it yes and I feel like So I start planning an event, especially my own events, I plan them uh, backwards. So it's like I just start with the end results. What am I looking for? Like for example, when I was working on the awards, I knew exactly which kind of seats we wanted to use. Like the setup was always clear for the last three years. So like when you're working backwards, now it's an issue of what is the budget? Where are we getting the money from? How do we make people trust that this event will be successful and attend? So I always work backwards. I, I visualize how I want it to be. Even if it's a wedding, a client comes, I'll just work on how are we going to deliver and then go backwards. And then that will help in budgeting, analyzing risks, and just putting more effort and time to get the result. Uh, basically, uh, we nowadays, uh, at first we used to just panic, but now 
<laughs> we've perfected the art of maybe even looking at the weather that specific time of course most of the challenges that we get in kenyan events is overflow because people don't respect the invite system so people will just like show up so we always um ready with extra seats it's like it's weird uh, somebody will say uh, the event is for 500 people and then i'll just have like 100 seats somewhere in a lorry but not in the ground waiting for them to overflow so it's like uh, you just there's a reputation in the challenges that you get in events because it will be either a weather thing so that one you can always handle by looking at google weather which is not accurate but then sometimes 70 percent accurate and then things like overflow you just prepare even if you don't tell the bride or the person you're doing the event for you're just ready so by the time they're like do you think you can get seats you're like yes then mm. Um, I feel like the best thing about Kenya is the fact that um, there are some things that we still not tapped, meaning there are a lot of opportunities. It's just because we try to be very rigid in the way we think, but there are a lot of opportunities that people can, it's like you are more likely to shine in Kenya because people give people chances even new ideas people accept them more and then we have that culture culture of trust i feel like i don't know how to explain it what is the proper word but i feel like the best thing about kenya is the fact that you can convince anybody to work with you as long as you know how to speak properly <laughs> yes um, i love um, hiking <laughs> The last time I hiked was far. I love I, I love hiking. I don't like traveling. I know you didn't ask what I don't like, but I don't like traveling because I just want to be in that destination, but I don't want to travel. I love swimming and also what else? I love baking. Yes, I'm a very good baker or cook. I think most of my inspiration comes from my dad. I remember when we were young, he would have like an idea and would give us books and tell us, I want you to draw for me the logo, mix your words up and come up with a business name. He used to, like, he was a dreamer. I don't know if I'm making sense. So I feel like I'm more like him. And uh, he would just come up with an idea, not knowing what would happen and we'll just go for it. So most of my inspiration comes from that. And also, I don't know if you can have two inspirations. I love giving people value for their money and bringing people together. So it's weird. That's why I have several businesses that tend to do different things. But my inspiration, like, what well, if I do a successful event where people will meet and genuinely convert business, not for me, but for them. And then somebody will be like, oh, thank you. That event, I was able to deliver this to this hospital or that. And that just gives me a lot of psych and inspiration. Uh, ugali and um, egg with nyanya, the scrambled one, just that, because I don't eat the red meat. Um, I was thinking, <laughs> I have a lot of things I see, but I feel like uh, the, the one, first I want to be the best marketer, be generally in Kenya, uh, but then I also wanted to venture into politics, that one I'm not sure. I would, um, I would have an amazing resort, yes. If it's a business, I would have an amazing resort, but then if it's a career, I would like to be a doctor. Yeah, a, psych yeah, a doctor, yeah, or a psychologist, one of either. Uh, I think the people just need to be more consistent. Uh, in whatever you're doing. I feel like most of the time people just start something and then after like, even a year is too early, they just give up. Consistency is key. And then um, what else? They also need to utilize the fact that there are a lot of opportunities right now that do not need money. You can just come up with an idea, use your friends as a portfolio and then just go for it. Yes. Money, money motivates me. It's a huge motivation to me. And uh, like the reason why you have to perform at your best is because if you don't, you'll end up losing the client and get not getting referrals. Yeah, so my biggest motivation, despite everything else, is money.
what I love about Africa is uh, the fact that we are all apart, but we are very similar. I've gotten into many programs with other people in other countries. And you see, even the way they talk, not, like our addiction is same. I don't know how to explain, even if somebody is like in the northern side or whatever. But then the place I would love to stay is South Africa. I just love South Africa completely. I would love to live there. I think most of the people, first of all, don't know that uh, I don't think anybody knows that I can plait hair. There's a time I actually thought I was going to be a hairdresser. I used to like make my sister's hair, like when she used to go to school, I made her hair for like five years. Yeah, every Sunday I would undo it and do more lines. I used to make my grandmother's hair like that. I think I would make a very good salonist. <laughs> I just feel like we need to be kind to each other. And the reason I'm saying that is because I feel like sometimes people out there, like uh, say you're driving and then somebody wants to crush you, you end up being mean and you're insulting them, but maybe they're just having a bad day. So if you can just be like, it's okay and slow down. I just feel like we should just be kinder to each other. Yes. Yes, uh, first of all, I feel like um, your thoughts become real. I am a huge uh, a believer in the law of attractions. And uh, I feel like everybody basically should just have a vision board. I feel like people don't know the power of vision boards. Yes, and uh, it doesn't matter. Um, the, most, the things you're having right now are the things you're wishing for earlier. So just be a little grateful. Gratitude goes a long way, yeah and uh, they should do like the 28 day gratitude challenge. I feel like I said too many things. <laughs>